Dr. Rachel David, CEO of Private Healthcare Australia, a peak body of Australia's private health insurance sector. Uh, welcome, and I look forward to a conversation today. G'day, Paul. It's uh, really good to be here and to perhaps discuss some of the trickier and more controversial issues that we deal with in, uh, in the health funds. It is an interesting area and it's an interesting time. It seems to me that y- your sector has been going through a series of reforms almost nonstop. Where is the discussion at right now? Well, look, I think we're facing some challenges that are not unique to private health in Australia, but are, you know, experienced by the whole Medicare system, but also by um, advanced economies around the world, and that we have this baby boom population that's now living much longer than we expected, but, you know, that comes at a cost. And so all around the Western world and other advanced economies, we're trying to work out how we can do that and provide people with what they want. And what, what does that, what, I mean, you put forward a range of proposals from changes to the devices to, to medical device pricing to uh, changing the nature of the product offering. Well, I think there are, there are a couple of things that are that are happening in worldwide. And these again, these things are not unique to Australia. And one is a much greater focus in a number of economies about the quality, safety and price of medical technologies. It used to be a bit of a... Um, a situation where, you know, individuals and and hospitals could basically do whatever they like and expect someone to fund it. The second thing that we we need to address is the setting of care. So now we've got a younger generation that's been educated by Uber and Amazon and they're not much less likely to want to go to a big institution and queue up and wait for care and, you know, at, at someone else's convenience. And as a result of the coronavirus pandemic, we're seeing people accept much, being much more accepting of telehealth options, online options, and hospital in the home for things as diverse as um, chemotherapy and dialysis. We've already had a, you know, there's already a long tradition of palliative care in the home in Australia, but for some of these other modalities, we're seeing it become much more common, as well as post-operative rehab and physiotherapy, which is a big change. Now, we need to focus on ensuring that the financial reimbursements mechanisms in Australia keep up with that chain and that we're not locked into funding institutions when the care that a large segment of our members need and want is going to be taking place elsewhere. What's, what's, what's the platform for this change? So, so, you know, as I said before, system level change is, is obviously really, really hard. And something like the PL, the prosthesis list, has been in place for a very, very long time. So, so actually, how do you achieve change? Well, I think we've reached a bit of a tipping point at the moment because as a result of some of those global forces but also local conditions, we're seeing the cost of gold hospital cover get to a level which is becoming unsustainable for the people who need it. So top hospital cover is the level which covers your, you know, your mental health care, your joint replacements, lens replacements, the sort of things that people will need more of as they get older. But for an over 65-year-old that might be on an annuity or even a pensioner, we have 300,000 pensioners on full-age pensions that still have private health insurance, $800 a month is about the average cost that you'll be trying to find for your private health insurance, and that doesn't include any excess or um, out-of-pockets that the surgeon might charge, and that is a really big chunk of your income. So we're seeing people look at, you know, downgrade their cover and looking at other options and even hit, hitting and running from private health insurance, which is becoming more and more common, you know, taking out um, a policy at a huge, you know, with the lifetime loading for 12 months and then getting five procedures booked in, which is kind of not, you know, the way the system is supposed to work. And we're really seeing people begin to hurt as a result of those premiums and the stratospheric prices that are being um, that we're obliged to pay under the government system for what are essentially generic medical devices are a major driver of those premiums. Rachel David, thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Paul. It's always good to talk to you. Thank you.